the previous six coaching video series, we covered the topic of passing and receiving. Now in the coming series, we'll cover the art and science of scoring field goals. The current trend has been to apply the following skills to score field goals. Hits, forehand, backhand. The backhand hit, also known as Tomahawk, has been heavily used by the players. They have mastered this skill and they have scored some beautiful goals from this skill, in addition to deflections and rebounds. In addition to the skills mentioned in the previous slide, I'd like to introduce some skills which have gone out of fashion, but you do see them once in a while being applied and it's in a, in a blue moon. These skills are reverse stick flicks, parabola scoops, regular scoops, first time shovel push from the left foot, deceptive hits and pushes, wrist hits, slice hits, pushes and hits on the wrong foot, first time shots on the goal, this is being applied, punch hits. One of the healthy criticisms, feedback I have been receiving from my viewers is that, hey Shiv, your videos are too long. Listening to your demand and advice, I am keeping this video short and sweet, so we will cover only one topic our skill and that is reverse stick flicks, when to apply, where to apply and most importantly how to apply. Before going any further I like to throw some light on the circle as they say know your terrain, know your battlefield so you feel very comfortable in the various zones of the circle and you know what to do and what not to do. Basically, I have divided the circle into three zones, green zone, yellow zone, and red zone. Green zone is the zone which is most favorable to score field goals. Yellow comes next to it, and the red zone is no, no, but if you score and you get the goal, then you are, uh, then the goalkeeper is too bad, put it this way. It's not that you are too good. Now to develop better understanding of the circle, we have divided into high goal scoring probability area, medium goal scoring probability area, low to medium goal scoring probability, probability area and low goal scoring probability area. This has been done keeping in mind the angles and its relation to the goal post. Just to elaborate the importance of the angle, I like to take these two examples from the final of the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games between Belgium and Australia. Belgium took these two tries from this narrow angle, which is more or less a red zone, and the great Aussie goalkeeper, of course, made the great saves because he was at the right spot at the right time. Here I like to quote Joachim Cruyff, one of the greatest soccer players from Netherlands. Please read it. In a way, it correlates with the tomahawk as we over rely on this favorite skill of scoring goals. Here are some case studies of the crucial matches where the player applying the tomahawk could not score the goal because it takes a second longer to score a goal with the tomahawk than, than a reverse stick flick. This example has been taken from the match between Uruguay and Canada during the 2022 Pan Am Cup. And here you can see that if the Uruguay player had applied the reverse stick flick, she could have easily scored, but she gave time for the goalkeeper to stop 
the shot. Olympic players are role model for the young and upcoming players. Here we see a young and upcoming player taking a back and sweep hit, whereas she could have easily pulled the ball and taken a reverse tip flick to score the goal. I don't think so she scored the goal over here, but what I can see is it's taking too long for her to connect to the ball. Keeping in mind the examples we just saw, it is fair to say that if the only tool you have is a hammer, you tend to see every problem as a nail. This case study example has been taken from the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games quarterfinal match between Australia and India. India was one goal up and here was a golden opportunity for Australia to equalize and here's the situation. It's good that this player from Australia did not use the tomahawk but she used the reverse stake push and the goalkeeper made the save. There's a difference between a reverse stake push and a reverse stake flick and that's what I'll demonstrate further on but just like to make this point over here. Here's another game situation where a star player from Spain missed the goal due to her not knowing how to use the reverse stick flick. This game situation has been taken from the FIH Pro League Season 3, the match between Netherlands and Spain. Here, the Spanish forward missed the goal. It was a golden opportunity to score the goal in a one-on-one -on -one game situation. Please study the photo sequence closely. I like to make this absolutely clear that I have utmost respect for these young and upcoming hockey players. But my message is that how we can improve, how we can get better, how we can have more specific tools in our toolbox or skill set so that we may not miss these golden opportunities. It is a learning error, not an execution error. You can see that how much we have improved, how long, how far we have come as a hockey playing community, but still how far we have to go to apply these soft skills which are missing from our game. What needs to be improved is that which other skills we can learn to apply in these game situations so that we may get improved results. So we will be focusing only on this zone and I will be demonstrating how to apply the reverse stick flick. Please observe the stance and the way I hold the stick and how I use the tip of the reverse stick. It's like chopping the wood. See how easy it is. You can see it. And it's quicker, way more quicker than the tomahawk shot, shot in a tight game situation. On your toes, knees are flexed, use the tip of the stick once more. See how easy it is and how quick it is. It doesn't get, goalkeeper doesn't get a time to get up if he's on the ground. One more, here we go. Repetition is the mother of learning. Here we are going to do exercise with a young hockey player, left hand on the top, right hand down, you, uh, on your toes, knees are flexed, upper body is low and you use the tip of the stick to use a reverse stick flick and I am here demonstrating with a young hockey player and showing and look at her stance, how beautiful stance she is. She is on her toes, knees are flexed, upper body is low, her right hand is down, she is in it optimal stance to flick the ball. Now when you are flicking the ball you have to use the reverse stick just like a daddy uses the axe to cut the wood. It is that action. Cutting the wood action. Chopping the wood. Just watch it please. I am giving feedback to a young hockey player to use which portion of the stick. As she is using the middle of the stick I am saying that use the tip. This is the tip to use the scissors stick. There's a big difference in this and you see that when you do so, how the ball goes in the air. I raise Watch. the stick a little bit here and if I want the ground, I do this. Yes. If I want in the air, I do this. Yes. Low, bit low. Move your feet. Low. 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 Thank you. 
As a coach, it is our responsibility to solve the problems, give specific feedback, be solution oriented so our young players may gain more knowledge and know which skill to apply where, when, how and why.